got a phone call yesterday morning, 7.30 a.m. It was Robert Plant. He said, hey Spud, I hope you've not forgot that Led Zeppelin IV turns 50 years old in November. I said, Planty, mate, it's a bit early, isn't it? What are you doing? He said, I know, it just couldn't wait. Fine, go on, get on with it. He said, you know, I hope you're gonna do some content on the channel. I said, of course I am, mate. What do you want me to do? He said, well, you've not covered Misty Mountain Hop um, amongst some other tunes on there. Why not? I just said, I haven't got round to it, Planty. It's now about 7.37 a.m. I got off the phone pretty sharpish. Put on my uniform and here we are. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I play Misty Mountain Hop by Led Zeppelin to celebrate this album turning 50. <laughs> Before we start, it is absolutely compulsory now for you to hit the like button because you do like this video. That's why you're here. Subscribe for future videos, hit the bell next to it to get notified when I upload those videos and then leave me a delicious comment in the comment section down below telling me how much you love me. And you know me, I'll leave you a decent reply. It is me replying, I don't have staff I'm skint. Speaking of being skint, if you want the tab for this, go and check it out on my Patreon. There's a lovely community of guitar enthusiasts over there and we'll make you feel exceptionally welcome. Here's the first riff we're gonna learn, slow. We start by sliding the pinky into the fifth fret of the E string, the note A. And because of that spacing, index finger falls nicely over the third fret, the G, and then we've got the open E. You can give the first two notes a tiny little micro pull. After that open E, you're gonna jump up to the octave of E, second fret of the D string with the index finger, and then go back to the low E. I use a little bit of palm muting to just keep things tidy and kind of chunk up the bottom end and you just rotate it round and round. Little chromatic chord pattern. We're going to be hitting three different chords but only two different shapes. Our first shape is going to be fifth fret of the D index finger, fifth fret of the B second finger and then sixth fret of the G with the third finger. I see this as being part of an A dominant seven chord but just the middle three notes. If you think that shape's a bit weird maybe on those strings but it's just our D major chord shape moved down a string, and then up to the fifth and sixth frets. So even though it's in a different area, it should feel familiar. Next shape is part of a D major bar chord. So that's gonna be your third finger barring across fret seven of the D, G, B. And then our other chord shape is the same as the first one, but on the fourth and the fifth frets. And you're just going to rotate those around on the beat following Planty's vocal. We finish on the same shape that we started that section on before going back to the other riff that I've already shown you. Now, to get into that riff, it can be a bit weird to suddenly jump to the pinky. So what I like to do is just drop my index finger down, kind of mute everything and try and catch that low E on like a raked upstroke. And it just lets you kind of transfer um, from section to section with a bit of aggression, a bit of style, and you're keeping things tidy, like this. Here's 
Here's how I play the next section. I watched a couple of videos of Jimmy playing this live and some of the YouTube covers as well. Doing me research, having a little snoop. And when it goes to the D chord, it seems like he likes to play it down here in open position. Chucking on the sus four, and even when it comes up to the G. Similar kind of thing. But on the record, I can definitely hear a slide into that D root note, and he ain't sliding into an open D note. So that's why I went for this. And I feel like if you're just gonna play this as a one guitar, outfit with a singer, um, the lower chord inversions are going to sit better in the mix for me. So the D bar chord is index finger on the fifth fret of the A string and then I use my pinky to bar the seven on the D G B. You can use third finger or even second, third and fourth fingers, which I hate, but each to their own. And your picking pattern is going to be A, G and then D, G, B, G, D just back and forth. We're then going to be transitioning to this G5 chord and I like to catch the open A string as a passing note stepping down to the G. I equate it to like catching a breath and because it's an open string it's something musical in between a chord change. That G5 shape is like a four fingered G but without the index finger. It's a G5 because this note would be your major third and because it's the only time it appears in the chord when we take it out it's now just a big fat G power chord. Roots and fifths. Picking pattern dead simple you're going to hit the low E skip out the A and then you're going to pick D G B E B G so all the way up and then just back down to the G. The only thing to add in is that slide into that D bar chord and then put the two chords together. We're going back to that first riff again and because our second finger is already on the low E string, I just slide that into the A. Just for the first repeat and then I go back to using my fourth finger. Now to transition into the guitar solo, we just have one slight change to that section at the end. So on that second repeat of the G5, I hit an extra open D at the end because we're not pushing into that A. And then it sounds like he has gone to hit an E power chord so index finger bar in the second fret of the A and the D, but he's maybe accidentally over barred and made it a sus4, catching the second fret of the, uh, the G as well, and then realized he doesn't want that there and kind of lifted it off. I might have gone mad, but if you can hear that on the record, let me know. If you can't, I have gone mad. But if you want to be extra Jimmy, or even more Jimmy than Jimmy ever was, if it's not there, then bar the second fret of the A, D, G, and then think, hmm, actually, I don't want that, and then lift it up till it goes away. And if it's not there, let's just put it there, okay? It's the tiniest, subtle thing, but... I think it sounds cool. Now, exactly the same as what I did in the 10 years gone lesson. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I've been told it's a good one. Um, because there's a few harmonies in this section, I'm gonna show you an example of them combined 
and then I'm going to teach you what I would consider to be the top line that Jimmy would do live if he wasn't trying to kind of um, wing it by playing both parts at the same time if he was just picking one. And that's going to be the kind of higher harmony line. So here it is. begin with we've just got two simple licks that repeat four times starting with third finger on the fifth fret of the B string index finger on the third and then the open and then slide back into the fifth fret pretty sharpish with the third finger You can add a little bit of vibrato to some of those notes. We're then going to slide up to the 10th fret and continue that same kind of idea. Third finger on the 10, index finger on the 8, and then come back to 7 and slide that straight back to 8. We then have a very quick bend from the 10th fret of the B up a whole step, and then back down to the 10 and repeat it. If you don't like that bend there, for whatever reason, you could always slide up to the 12. The slide also sounds cool, so pick whichever one you prefer. Now we're into like the main part of the solo where it kind of gets a little bit more melodic and opens up. I start with a pre-bend release, 9th fret of the G string, whole step, down. Then I come back to the 7th fret with the index finger. 3rd finger goes to the 9 on the D, and then you go back to that 7, so back and forth. Try and make that opening pre-bend release a little bit sleazy. Pinky comes up to the 10th fret of the high E, grabs that note by itself. And then we have a whole tone bend on the 10th fret of the B string with the third finger. Bend it up, bring the pick in to choke it at the top, and then pre-bend release it down. It's really important that you stop it at the top before you let it down. Back to the 8th fret index finger. And then we go to the 9 on the G with the 2nd finger. Back to the 8 on the B and hammer that to the 10. finish we're going to slide from the seventh fret of the G with the index to the nine. You can give that some slow vibrato. And to wrap up the solo he ends with this lick. From the stuff I've seen of Jimmy play it live and a couple of other covers I feel like everyone does it across two different strings, but I've put it on a single string because I find it less fiddly having to change, and I'll explain why in a bit. But I start with 10th fret of the B, whole tone bend, choke it at the top, and then pre-bend release down, and then push it back up. Then I come down to the 7th fret of the B, and I do whole tone bend up, down, and a pull off in one swooping motion. If you're changing from the B to the G string, you have to release that last bend without hearing it and then change string. And personally, I just feel like it's easier on the B because you've always got contact with the string.
Last part, outro. You only need a couple of things for this. An A power chord, index finger hammer on from like E minor to E major, and it just changes the rhythm like three times. And this is one of the coolest things about Jimmy, He's such a master of rhythm, these kind of angular, quirky rhythms. I feel like he always has a great idea of what he wants to do, and then he just kind of gets in the zone and changes it up, which is why you get so many kind of intricate variations on parts throughout Zeppelin's catalogue. If that makes sense. If it doesn't, put it in a letter. I'll read it. Right. Index finger bar in the second fret of the D and the G. And then we're going to hit the open A with that. That's an A5 power chord. You're going to hit it twice. Then we're going to hammer the index finger on from the open G to the first fret and then catch the open E on an upstroke. It's fine if you catch the open B as well. You're gonna do that four times in a row. Now we're gonna to drop to a single A5 power chord, but the same rhythm hammer on. And then we're going to continue that single A5 power chord for the next three repeats, but we change the rhythm of the hammer on. All in all, one more time goes like this. Well done for learning yet another Led Zeppelin tune with me, Spud Spreading. If you liked this video, like it. Simple. Subscribe, hit the bell so that we can do it again sometime soon. And remember, this is to celebrate this incredibly iconic, fantastic album turning 50 years old. So I'm going to be doing some other Led Zeppelin related content on this channel over the month. Maybe another lesson? What's next on the album? <gasps> that reminds me, actually. I bet you've never noticed this. If you've got the vinyl, the remastered version, open it up, okay? Slide out the record. And if you just look inside here, there's a little white square. <laughs> 